as I said, where we're going next, is we have an infinitely large plane of positive charges. So, we have, we're looking for the electric field that exists uh, at a distance r from, from an infinite plane of positive charges. And again, it's uniform. Okay, so it's basically a thin plate of uniform positive charge. Positive, 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 positive. So this one goes to negative infinity, this one goes to positive infinity. Same is true here. Positive infinity, negative infinity. If you add them up, you get two times infinity, which is of course greater than infinite. Always fun. Now, notice that this picture and this picture look identical. That's because when I draw it in two dimensions, they are going to look identical. However, this one is a single line of charges, and this one is an infinite plane of charges that comes out of the board and goes this way and that way, every direction. So an infinite plane as opposed to just a single line of charges. We can tell here again that the electric field is going to look something like this. We are going to use Gauss's law. Vlad, what is Gauss's law? Uh, well, we're going to go that circle. Oh. The, the total electric flux equals the closed surface interval of E dot product DA equals uh, Q in over E dot. So again, we need to pick our Gaussian surface. We need to pick our Gaussian surface such that the angle is either 0 or 90 degrees and the electric field is constant throughout. Now, notice the electric field here was constant on the everywhere we were talking about the side of the um, Gaussian surface. So now, we're going to pick a Gaussian surface that instead of being like this, is actually like this. So again, I'm going to use a cylinder. It's going to look like this. I'll show you in a second. So again, we have our Gaussian surface. Which is, again, a cylinder in this particular case. So the question is, which angle needs to be zero degrees? The angle between what and what? Matt? Uh, well, I had a question about the question. That's fine. Um, Can we answer this one first? Oh, so yeah. we'll get to your, let's not do two questions at the same time. So I need, what angle needs to be zero? The angle between what and what? Miller. The area vector and the electric field. The area vector and the electric field. Going back to the example we just did, the angle between the area vector and the electric field right here was equal to zero. If we were to do the area vector on this side, that area vector would have been this way. And so the area vector on ev at every point would be equal, the angle between the area vector and the electric field would be equal to zero for each one of those points, as opposed to the top and the bottom where the electric field, the angle between the electric field and dA was equal to 90 degrees, and there we got it equal to zero. So now we come back over here. Walk them through it. Hillary. Oh, we know for the side, the angle will be um, zero. We know for the what? The, the angle will be zero? For the, like, the circular side. The circular portion. Now, notice in this particular case that we're actually talking about both sides, right? So we're going to refer to this as, I'll call it an end. We have another end over here. So we have the angle for dA for the end is going to be zero. 
True. What else, Hillary? Um, no, from the, um, the middle searches, it'll be um, like the middle searches, and then from the bottom. Notice for the side of the cylinder that the DA, which is in this picture is going to be up, in this picture is going to, or at this side is going to be down, that is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees. So when we talk about this, for the total, we have the, if we just look at the electric flux for the, what I'm gonna call the side, where this is the side, we get um, E dA times the cosine of 90 degrees, which is equal to zero. So when we talk about the total, actually all we need to talk about is the electric flux, which is from the two ends. Now notice the pluralization there, because we have two ends, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side for our Gaussian surface, our Gaussian cylinder. Okay, so keep going from this point right here. Um, how's it? Um, hold on. Actually, we didn't finish this, so you can, we can't pull out the electric field just yet. Can we make it like E, D, A, cosine 90, or cosine 0? Which one is it? 0. Okay. For the ends, it is E, D, A times a cosine of 0 degrees. I agree with that. So then, cosine of 0 is just 1. So now, as you said, the electric field, notice the electric field at this point is going to be equidistant from the plane. So the electric field at this point, as you said, is going to be constant. So we can bring that out. So we have the electric field times the closed surface integral of dA for the ends. What now? Um, the integral dA is just A. So dA. Area of the ends. Ah, so area of what? Both ends. Okay, so if it's going to be the area of both ends, how should I identify this? Like EA minus 1 plus EA minus 2. Or EA and yeah, I don't know. I just think I <laughs> That's okay. It's here. So what I'm going to put is 2 times the area of the end, right? So because we have two ends, we're going to have 2 times the area of the end. We have 1, 2, x. That's the left-hand side. So we have E times 2 times the area of the end. Now, on the right-hand side, we have the charge inside divided by E naught. We need to figure out the charge inside this uniformly charged thin plate, positively charged thin plate. Is it surface charge? We need to now deal with surface charge density. Symbol for surface charge density. Travis. Uh, lowercase sigma. Lowercase sigma. Equation for surface charge density. John. Um, Q over A. Q over A. So what am I going to do with that then? John. Um, you bring the to the other side, so the, um, you, it's charge inside over, uh, Charge inside over what? The area of the plate. The, it's not the area of the plate. Well, the plate, uh, <coughs> inside this, well, inside what? Gaussian surface. So the area inside the Gaussian surface, which is what? Uh, so, Say so again. Uh, uh, so yeah. It's a circle, but how have we identified it on the board? Imagine. It's one of the ends, right? <laughs> so this is the area of a single end, because the area inside the Gaussian surface that is enclosed in the, or the thin, the area of the thin plate that's enclosed inside the Gaussian surface is just the area of a single end. So now we can say that the charge inside the Gaussian surface is equal to the surface charge density times the area of a single end. 
So we can now put in surface charge density divided by, multiplied by the area of an n divided by e naught, or the surface charge density multiplied by the area of an n divided by e naught. <laughs> I feel the excitement. Ooh, this is going to be the 221st time I've played this on the computer. Now, a couple of things to point out. One, does the distance from the infinitely large charged thin plate matter? Nope. No, because it's infinitely large, it doesn't matter how far away from the plate you are, you're actually gonna have the exact same electric field. Did the shape of the area of the end of the Gaussian surface matter? No, we never plugged in anything for this shape. So we could have used a cube. We could have used what, just about any shape that was similar to this, as long as it is consistent in area all the way across. Then the area at the end is going to cancel out. For me, it's easiest to use a cylinder, but it doesn't really matter so much. So we have figured out the electric field that exists at a point, any point, close to or far away from an infinitely large charged plate. Problem. Yep. Why can we orient the cylinder vertically in this problem? It's a great question. So the question was, why couldn't we have oriented the cylinder vertically? So let's think about that for a minute. If instead we had the plate that looked like this, if we orient this vertically, Why doesn't this work? Uh, Travis? Because uh, dA from the side of the cylinder will not always be uh, zero. At this point, right here, dA is going to be to the right. And that would cause it to be zero, right? The angle between dA and the electric field will be zero. But you have to look at every point, right? If we come out and look at this point right here, the angle between dA and the electric field at this point is actually 90 degrees. At this point is 45, so on and so forth. It's gonna change depending on which one of these we choose. And so because it's not consistent, it's not either zero or 90 degrees, it does not work. 